Well, good morning. Today is the last bit of 64. It's verses 33 through 43. And we've got some good verses in here. Um, first one is 33, which says, Be not weary in well-doing. And then uh, also it says, Out of small things proceedeth that which is great. And um, what else? It was, it was a good little reading last night. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Anyways, so. Uh, so just uh, be not weary in well-doing. Um. Franklin D. Richard says, In the early days of tribulation in the church, the Lord encouraged the brethren by telling them that they were laying the deliberate foundation of a great and mighty work. I recollect how it used to cheer us up in the midst of our persecutions. So that's um, a quote from someone who was there, who, who received it firsthand, who was, you know, not taking it to apply to their lives in their day, but he was there. When it was, and it cheered them up, and I think it should cheer us up too. Ugh. Um, very shortly after the organization of the church, less than a year and a half, the Lord speaking to the elders of the church said, and then uh, verse 33 is quoted, according to the law that God had revealed, and in keeping with the law of the land, this church was established with only six members. Yet the early rise of the church from that humble beginning was great and marvelous. The Lord was pleased, and the brethren engaged in the work of the ministry had been very diligent and devoted. The Lord assuredly didn't want them to be weary in well-doing because they were laying the foundation of a great work. And I think that's one that we can apply to our daily lives. Um, and then when he says... Out of small things proceedeth that which is great. Um, John A. Woodstow says, In seeking a testimony of the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel, gospel restored in our day, we need chiefly to give attention to the little things of life. And the little things are really the great things of life, and the things we call great in life are really the little things. Life is made up of little things, our daily duties. We are too prone to say that that which is clear and understandable is of a little consequence, while that which is complex and difficult to understand we sometimes hold to be great. Let us remember that the little things of life, the simple things, are the ones that lead us into the greater truths. And I like this because it, it helps you put in perspective um, your life. Uh, the little things are what make your life great. You know, those little moments that I have with the boys each day where, you know, Mason will come and sit on my lap and I'll read a book. Or Zach will be like, Haley, let's snuggle. Ugh, I love it when Zach wants to snuggle with me. And then, of course, every moment I have with Alex is just so wonderful. And those are the great things in life. You know, not the not the worries or the cares or the what the world might think might be great. Um, and so it just I don't know. It puts it puts life into perspective. What is great and what isn't, and and that's all. Yeah. Um, And then it gives a little thing about the rebellious are not of the blood of Ephraim. And I read it before I turned on the camera, but I have no recollection of it now. Um, he has said unto us in his revelations that the willing and obedient shall eat of the good of the land of Zion in these last days. The obedient are numbered among the children of Ephraim, 
and the Lord says that the rebellious are not of the blood of Ephraim. He further says that they shall be plucked out, and they shall be cut off, and out of the land of Zion, and shall be sent away, and shall not inherit the land. From the beginning of this church until the present, the men and women who have been obedient to the counsels of God, servants, have always been the most favored. There is an order in the church of Christ which all must observe, and no one can be disobedient without bringing the displeasure of the Lord upon him. This is a principle which all should learn. And that's George Q. Cannon. Um, I think it's easy to for some to say that because we are members of the church, we are the chosen people, blah, blah, blah. But really, the only chosen are those who are obedient to the commandments, whether you're a member of the church or not. And that's something to keep in mind for when, you know, a, somebody's giving a lesson and something pricks your heart a little too much, like, oh, he just said that we're better than people or, you know, something of that nature. Anyways, because I've heard it a lot. And it drives me crazy. Because I don't want to get into it. You know, these people who are like, ah, they say that Mormons are better than everybody. They say that we're the chosen people and we don't have to do anything because we're the chosen people because we're members of the church. And it's like, no, nobody's ever said that. Nobody's ever said that. It's not members. It never says the members of the church will be saved. It says the obedient will be saved. And people get those two things confused. All right. Enough of my rambling. Today is family weeding day at the garden. So we got to go. I love you.